Right, continuing on our series about solo boosts using the Axe FX3, I want to show you three blocks that we can put before the amp uh, to essentially change the character of the tone a little bit. That's another great way to set your solo tone apart from your rhythm tone. You know, when we were talking about boosts before, we were either saturating the amp or we were making it louder. In this case, what we want to do is try to change the character a little bit. So one of my favorite ways to do that is with a wire block. So I'll show you very briefly how to set up a wire block. I have got an external expression pedal plugged into the pedal one jack of my Axe FX3. So if we open up a wire block, this is what you want to do. This is how you set it up. Right click the control parameter and set the source to pedal one. If you are using an external MIDI controller, you want to set the pedal source to probably external one or whichever corresponding device it is. Then, because we want to set up auto engage, right? Uh, I like to set auto engage to just medium speed. And then I turn the offset, uh, sorry, the off value to 95%. So that means that when my toe is down, that the effect is off. And when I bring it back, so kick it back, that it's going to turn the effect on much like a real wire pedal. This is like the opposite of the way a Morley wire pedal would work. So in which case, if you want to have your heel down, be the off position, set the off value to 5%. In that case, you can see that it's off. <laughs> But then when I pull back on the pedal, it will auto-engage the block and give me a wire sound. And it's totally not doing that, so I've made a mistake somewhere. Let's see, auto-engage, medium speed, off value 95%, should do it. There we go, obviously made some kind of very basic error, that happens a lot. So these are the stock settings with the Clyde block. Uh, I normally like the Crybaby block, that's sort of my go-to. Uh, so I like that one. You see that the level defaults to minus three. What I like to do is set the level to zero, and then we'll make a few tweaks with the frequency. But for now, I mean, you know, play a bit of rhythm, play a bit of lead. The wire really helps you cut through. <laughs> Kind of got, I guess, what I would call Kirk Hammett wire, where you just go wah, wah, wah with it. Or you've got like the kind of Michael Schenker thing where he would uh, basically find a position somewhere around here and just set it there. So it sort of makes your guitar really honk. One thing that I like to do with the wire though is to just very slowly sweep it so it gives you this kind of filter effect like so. So that is a great way to get that happening. What I like to do with the wire generally is turn the minimum frequency down a little bit, say to about 350 and turn the maximum frequency down a lot. I like 1400 hertz. Uh, it gives you this, which I think is uh, sort of less piercing when you've got the toe down. So that's how I like to set up a wire. If you want it to sort of cut through more, you can raise that maximum frequency. That's pretty cool. Another trick uh, like that, this is a kind of Eddie Van Halen solo boost trick. Uh, go to a phaser block and select the script 90, so phase 90 block, and turn the rate down a lot, uh, basically almost as low as it'll go, and it gives you this kind of effect. It's not dissimilar to what the wire does. So I think that sounds really, really cool if you're a Van Halen fan like I am. Um, I always used to have a Phase 90 on my board, uh, basically with the rate turned down to a minimum just for that effect when playing guitar solos. That works really well. Another thing that you can do, you can sort of do a similar thing with like a chorus block. 
uh, one instance of which, uh, you know, I'd go for like a really low rate with something like the CE2 model. I think that sounds pretty cool. It gives you a similar effect. You get this. And what I would do there is turn auto depth off and turn the depth right down like so. Which isn't too dissimilar to a sort of rotary kind of sound. You could use a flanger for this, you could use a rotary block with a really low rate as well, which I think sounds pretty cool. One advantage with the rotary block is you have a drive control in there, so you turn this right down. Which I think is pretty cool. Again, it just kind of changes up the character of the sound a little bit. It doesn't make it any louder, it doesn't really make it any more saturated, but it does change the character. So you can obviously combine these tricks together with like a front end drive boost or EQ boost and a post amp level boost, and it will be even more effective. But I really like those. Um, with the flanger block, uh, to me, this is kind of like uh, Pat Travis. If you like the Pat Travis band, uh, a lot of his stuff kind of makes use of this, uh, I like the analog mono. And what you do, the sort of trick here, turn the rate right down, you can set uh, the auto depth off and I'll turn the depth down as well. But you can adjust this delay here because a, a flanger is basically like a chorus with feedback with a very, very fine delay control. So leave the feedback off and it's essentially a chorus and you can play around with the delay to get a cool doubling effect. And these effects sound way different in front of the amp uh, than behind the amp. What I'm going to do in another video is talk about putting these blocks behind the amp for different kind of sounds. Uh, so that is the modulation section, flanger, chorus, phaser. Uh, you can obviously play around and rotary block as well. There's a couple of other modulation blocks you can play around with there. Uh, but the other one that I wanted to look at quickly was the delay block in front of the amp. So uh, a lot of the time when you're playing with a distorted amp, you put your delay in the effects loop. Uh, or you know, put it in post after gain. And we're definitely gonna have a look at that because I use that all the time down the track in another video. But if you just take the mono tape algorithm, let's start with like 200 milliseconds of delay because that's a pretty, yeah, somewhere around there. Uh, it gives you this effect. Pete Thorne has a really great video on like echo before distortion. And again, this is kind of the 70s thing. It's like Van Halen, Richie Blackmore, guys like Pat Travis as well. Uh, it, it's just gonna give you something that sounds cool. You know, that's literally the only way I can describe this, is it just sounds cool. It's kind of gross and icky, and it's, it's not a polite sound, but when you're playing guitar solo, you want it to be rude, so it takes you from... <laughs> And you can hear there that with a lot of feedback, you uh, are essentially the delay repeats are decreasing in gain. So I like to set the feedback basically to zero. So it gives you one repeat. And we can turn the drive up in this block, which is pretty cool. Which is going to make the delayed note sound more like the original note without increasing the volume any louder. You know, I can turn the mix down on this delay block and turn the drive up and I get this. And then from there I might want to turn the feedback up a little bit and turn the delay time up a little bit. Together with that flanger block that I had before. It's 
kind of like the Jimmy Page thing as well. That's what that sort of reminds me, like you know, mid to mid to late seventies Zeppelin. And then with the Wah, this is this is so much fun. This is channeling the seventies big time. Cool does that sound? That is one way to boost your solos. Another thing as well in the wah block, we've got a graphic EQ. So what you can do is boost the mids with that when the wah block is on. Say we just sort of give it a uh, light boost. Well, I'm actually going pretty heavy with the boost. But basically using this graphic EQ and boosting 1K and 1600 and 2.5 a fair bit. All right, like so, let me turn that up. So this is gonna change the tone of the wah when I kick it in. Let's just have a listen to that on its own. This actually kind of reminds me of like modern Paul Gilbert as well. Like if, you know, he's a big fan of Pat Travis as well, uh, but the way he would use these effects as well. So I guess that's another cool reference point. But yeah, that's part one of using some delay and modulation effects uh, in front of the amp, uh, using the Axe FX3 to get a solo boost tone. I'll do another video in the next couple of days where we look at how to use these style effects after the amp, namely using some different delay types. Of course, you can use any delay type that you like in, pay in place of the tape delay. But, uh, you know, using delay types after the amp, using stuff like pitch detune, the dimension chorus, uh, reverb, all those kind of things after the amp. Uh, in that case, I would say that it's less about changing the character of the guitar going into the amp and more about creating space for your solo to sit. So we'll talk about that when we get there. Thanks so much for watching the video as always. If you liked it and you're not already subscribed, hit subscribe. If you are subscribed, hit the little bell and I'll see you guys around very soon. Cheers.